The North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Young Ho says that North Korea may test an H bomb over the Pacific Ocean. Can they do it? Right now, technologically, we do not believe they can do it at all anytime soon. Uh, but the important thing to remember are two things. One, uh, we I actually have not heard, based on the sound bites that I've seen, I have not heard um, the before and after sound bite. So basically, the North typically gives conditions or preconditions under which they will carry out uh, a, a provocation or an act or a test or an activity. Uh, and so we have not heard that. So I'm not sure if that was there, but it was only edited out. Uh, the second point is uh, that, uh, yes, they do not have the capability yet to do this, but uh, they are foreshadowing what their intentions and their goals are for the future. And by saying this now at this point without the capability, they're also giving themselves cover and justification for doing it when they feel the time is uh, needed and necessary to carry out uh, a hydrogen bomb, bomb test over the Pacific. Uh, so those are the two things that came to my mind, and, it, and we should not uh, overreact uh, to this statement, but we also should mm. not underreact, because China in 1966, they actually mm. tested a nuclear weapon mounted on a ballistic missile. They fired it across their, their own country to the West, and they tested it this way. So there is historical precedent. The biggest difference now is is, uh, North Korea does not own any land or islands in the Pacific, uh, so this is not their territory, and yet they're, they're threatening to carry out, or he's threatening to at some point carry this out. But again, uh, the North eventually follows through uh, with their statements, with their threats, with their pronouncements, but it's always been a matter of circumstance and time. So we'll have to see under what circumstances they will actually do this. And, and then there's the escalating war of words that we have between Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. Mm. But do you fear that it's becoming more than that, that, that Kim and Trump are actually thinking about and are mentally prepared for actual conflict? Well, the danger here with the war of words, the war of nerves, uh, really is the potential for a misinterpretation, miscalculation that might uh, make either side stumble into, or both sides stumble into some sort of conflict and war. So that's uh, the biggest danger. What's interesting right now is uh, because Kim Jong-un has come out himself, he's directly responded to Trump. We've never seen any Kim leader do this ever in the history of uh, North Korea. Uh, and he is basically saying, um, it's interesting that we're seeing both leaders of both countries speaking to each other, but over the press. That's a very interesting picture that we're seeing. Uh, so in my mind, uh, I do not think that a scenario where in which we can actually see them talk directly in person may not be unimaginable. However, of course, there are many different factors uh, uh, that go into uh, determining whether this type of direct person-to-person -person meeting is um, possible or not. But this is an interesting um, picture and situation we're, we're observing right now.